In today's video, we're going to be focusing on sharpening up your short game when you're facing these short green side pitches, especially from lush lies. So soft, lush lies in the winter. What do so many golfers do? Catch the ground heavy, leave the ball short in the bunker. Today's video is going to make sure you never do that again. Make sure you check it out. Welcome back to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Branston Golf and Country Club. As mentioned there in the intro, today's video is a short greenside pitch shot. So facing something like this, where I've got a juicy lie in the rough, we've got a bunker to clear, and a varying amount of green to cover, depending on the club that we're going to use. What I see so many people do with these soft, lush lies that we often get, especially in the winter time here, you know, we're in January in the UK, the ground conditions are very soft underfoot, and they haven't cut the grass as much, but let's say we've got a good lie, the ball's sitting up in the grass for a minute here, a lot of people thinking it's going to be a really good thing. They've almost got that ball on a tee. And what I often see is them not using the right club or not utilizing the club in the right way, catching the ground and digging into it or sliding underneath the golf ball. And the result is short. They're always leaving that ball short in that bunker. So today we're going to be talking about hitting that greenside pitch, especially from these soft conditions. So the first thing is use your sandwich when you can, when the lie is lush, when the ball's sitting up on the grass. And the reason for that is bounce, okay? So bounce angle is just that the trailing edge of the golf club, or at least the middle of the, the wedge on the bottom of the sole there will be lower than the front edge. The front edge is sitting up in the air a little bit, and the club is designed to skim, slide, or bounce. And if you've seen some of my videos before, you'll have heard me rattle on about bounce, talking about it in bunkers when there's soft, lush lies. And the same is true when we're talking about these conditions here for pitching. We want to utilize loft, yes, but we also want to use the bounce. And your sand wedge will be the club in your bag that will likely to have the most amount a bounce on it. Your pitching wedge, gap wedge, your lob wedge will normally have about half of the amount of bounce of your sand wedge. If you've got some custom wedges, some small heads, they may well tell you the bounce angle on here. The one I'm using is 10 degree. I'd encourage you to have a, a club in your bag that's got at least that, potentially even more. And it's nice to have a club with a bit of loft like a lob wedge that's got a slightly lower bounce option that would work really well when it's firmer, harder, tighter lies. But in these soft, lush, wintry conditions, use a sand wedge when you can, because it's got your highest amount of bounce on it. It's gonna really allow that club to slide rather than a dig. Now we've gotta make sure that we're using the bounce correctly. So on a shot like this, I'd like the ball to be middle or just a little bit forwards and middle, nearing my left chest for me as a right-handed golfer towards my lead side. And I do want to play with a bit of pressure onto my lead leg. So I'd favor around 65% onto my lead side, but we've got to make sure we do not push our hands forwards, creating what we call shaft lean when we're doing that, because for every degree of loft we're taking off, we're pretty much taking off a degree of bounce also. So we could easily turn a 10 degree bounce into zero, zero bounce golf club or negative, we get things like that. Hit the ground, stop, the divot almost folds over the ball. We just don't use the wedge correctly. So we've got to really make sure that although we're playing got a whole load of muck on my club now. Although we're playing the ball middle to forwards and our weight forwards favoring my lead leg, I want my handle more level with the golf club, not forwards, not creating shaft lean. The last thing we're gonna be trying to do is make sure that we're actually creating a wider swing. So I did a video quite recently talking about the difference in pitching styles between Jason Day and Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods with an earlier wrist set here and allowing that club to catch up with his hands when he wants to hit the high one or hitting the driving forwards one with his hands a little bit more leading. Jason Day will tend to play a much wider dead hand shot, I would class it. Now, when your ball's sitting up on that lush grass, soft conditions, if we want to utilize the bounce of the golf club, we definitely want more of the Jason Day method. So I will put a link in the video 
to that video there as well. It's worth checking out the difference between Tiger and Jason Day. We definitely want more the day method here. So we want this wider movement, back wider movement through. I tend to think of it as more of a U-shaped swing. So the club's staying low to the ground for longer rather than a V-shaped swing if my wrists were cocking up sooner. So I want much, much, much more of a wide swing when I've got that ball off this lush lie. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. So I've got a, a couple of clubs with, with different lofts, but similar bounces. So I'm using the slightly lower lofted one here, just because the pin's that bit further back and the greens are soft. If the pin was closer to me, I'd use a, slight, a little bit more loft when I can. The likelihood, as I said, if you carry pitching wedge, gap wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge, or a, a combination of those, it'll be your sand wedge that will have your most amount of bounce. Normally around that 56 degree is your sand wedge. So I've got that ball middle to a little bit forwards, weight slightly favoring my lead leg, but you'll see my handle is more level. So the end of the grip is close to my belly button. And I just want to feel a very wide movement. So I'm gonna hopefully create more of a shallow divot skimming of the grass. Very happy with that. Can't believe how quickly it stopped actually. Landed exactly where I'd want to. Um, you know, I, I knew the green was soft, so I've flown it up there to all of a couple of yards short of the green and the ball still stopped. But importantly, in soft, wet, lush, wet ground conditions, I've just created a skimming movement there. I haven't got that club digging. So what we're trying to eliminate here is hands forwards, ball back, early wrist cock, all these combination of things that get the club to dig. That digging movement, I got the ball first there, luckily, and you can see no real control, huge divot. There I've gone in with negative bounce, got that club digging, and that's what I see with a lot of amateur golfers. Maybe they're not that, not that extreme, but we see varying amounts of that. Now, had I have got the ground, of course, before the ball, you would have seen me just duff it really into that bunker, which I guess is the quite common one. So another one, soft, lush ground conditions. Use the loft, use the bounce. So get that ball middle to forwards, weight forwards, but move the handle more level. Now it's going to be a nice wide movement back and through. And that really means I'm utilizing loft, hardly disturb the grass there. So very, very shallow, which is what you want to be when the ground conditions are softer. Utilize the bounce of the golf club by taking your higher bounce wedge, make sure your handle is more level, not forwards, and then this wider movement, and you're really gonna nail those shots. If this video has helped, hit the thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel to never miss a video again, at least two instructional videos a week. Cheers guys, we'll see you soon.